As a hardcore gamer, sometimes I really miss the idea of arcades. It was cool that growing up, there were these physical buildings we'd walk into that had all sorts of brawlers and bashers, the latest fighting games, or my personal favorite, light gun games. These were an entire genre of games where you'd actually physically pick up a gun and shoot at stuff like dinosaurs or zombies. And that's where House of the Dead really grew to fame. Now the House of the Dead remake, this game is incredibly good. It just is a complete reimagining of the original House of the Dead with new sound effects, new graphics, and in my opinion, a vastly improved scoring system that makes playing through this game again and again extremely fun. There is one tiny gripe we're going to get into, but let's start. This is my brutally honest review for the House of the Dead remake. Now, if you could please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's talk about the greatness of House of the Dead. This game is so freaking cheesy, from ridiculous dialogue of dying scientists to those times where you get a headshot on a beastie so hard that they fly back 15 feet. This game specifically is such a freaking gem, and I'm always curious how you can update a game that was so quirky. It was a game that was certainly flawed. The original audio of this game did not work very well. There were certain problems with the original House of the Dead that have been completely erased. Let's start things off by talking about the controls themselves. So currently, this game only exists on Nintendo Switch. You can't buy it anywhere else. So when you're playing this, there is the choice of full-blown motion controls, or just analog stick, where instead of actually firing at the screen, you can just press a button to shoot and a button to reload. Now honestly, both of these control styles work exceptionally well, and you could set it up so just by pressing the left button, you can go back and forth between these different control modes, which I enjoy doing the most. It's cool to like sometimes be blasting a bunch of monsters and then your hand gets tired, or if you've been playing for a bunch of hours, it's cool to sort of experiment with both modes of control. Control. Now, this is important to note because it does mean that if you're somebody that owns just a Nintendo Switch that you play in portable or a Nintendo Switch Lite, this game is still fully playable from start to finish just in handheld because you can use the analog sticks. Now, they also provided a surprising amount of customization to the controls themselves to make it where you can actually tinker with the specific speed of things like the aiming. You can change the sensitivity of the gyroscope. It makes it where aiming and accuracy is very easy to adapt to your exact speed. You'll notice I'm kind of steamrolling in this game, and it's because of this game itself. Like, the controls are so freaking crisp that it's easy to be good at it. I mean, straight up, I played through this game about 17 times this week and it's been exceptionally fun but let's talk about the completely new features besides just the graphics obviously this is a complete redo of the visuals the art the music oh my god the new soundtrack is freaking pulse poundingly epic but what actually got me the most is some of the stuff they've invented completely for this. Like, once you start beating the game and unlocking some of the hidden stuff, there's unlockable cheat codes. There's stuff like you can actually get achievements. These are special objectives inside the game itself, so that the first time you clear a level, the first time you manage to get a multi-kill, finding all the secret scientists hidden in a particular lab, you get these special permanent bonuses. And to me, that's great. It definitely creates that necessary replayability. Now, if you actually haven't played House of the Dead before, part of what's interesting about it is that there's two separate characters that go on slightly different paths. You don't really need to play through the game multiple times, but most people do because it's cool to see the different journeys they go on while trying to survive the House of the Dead. But additionally, you can actually go and just check out separate optional paths. If you happen to shoot and save somebody's life, they may give you a key card that unlocks a side entryway. Or sometimes just shooting the lock off a barrier may actually open up a side chamber. I like the fact that this game is just full of these little teeny tiny goofy secrets that don't really matter but are fun in the grand scheme of things. Especially with, this is going to be the most random compliment, I love, love, love 
the new scoring system. There's basically, whenever you're starting a game up, you can choose all sorts of different options. Basically stuff like the speed, as I mentioned, the control style, if you want to play it solo or co-op, or this completely new scoring system, which they call modern points, which makes it where getting quick kills can give you a multiplier. Actually reloading with an empty clip can give you an extra couple hundred points. And it's cool to actually finish matches and see how many points you can score in a particular level, how efficient you can be, which path gives you the highest rank, and there is of course built-in leaderboards, and I seriously dig that, especially when playing Horde mode. This is a completely new invention, they've added it just for this version, and it's hysterical. It is essentially a mode that multiplies certain zombies in particular areas, making it so sometimes there is 15 times more zombies. Now you might think that would be completely overwhelming or just dull the senses. It is hysterical. It is just bizarre how well it fits. Like you'd think that the screen just being so bulgingly full with enemies where their character models are actually overlapping would be kind of lame, but it's fun as heck. It is great to sometimes just put it on a harder difficulty and die while trying to fire off swarms and swarms of enemies. But some people enjoy this game specifically for the multiplayer because, you know, classic arcade games, if you wanted to double your chances of taking down that next impossible boss, it helped to have a friend with a giant pile of quarters. Well, there is drop-in, drop-out co-op. Whenever you want, if the other person picks up a controller and co-op is enabled, they can just start shooting and join in on the fun. Now, I decided to beat this game a couple times just with my girlfriend, and she's never really played House of the Dead. It was such a good time. It was cool, both of us actually trying to find all the little hidden stuff, getting secret weapons, and of course, scoring a ton of headshots. This project is seriously high quality, and I feel like the best testament to that is that Somebody can play the game for the first time and it feels modern, it feels fun, it feels accessible even if people don't have that nostalgia baked into it. Now there is some small flaws about this, but most of them actually exist only in the handheld version of it. While I was playing this full screen on a typical TV with just normal scoring, everything worked great. There is a performance mode and a graphics mode where you can boost the frame rate. This goes up to about 45 frames a second, but there were occasional dips, especially in handheld. I want to call them micro freezes, where the screen would stick for just a little teeny tiny half second, especially while it's walking from place to place. Not a complete game breaker, but it did happen frequently enough that it became slightly annoying especially with the other strange problem of this. While you're trying to configure your perfect aiming speed, a lot of times you're spending time in the menus, but the menus themselves look like trash. I have no idea who decided to design this, but it's like these weird cut out pieces of paper, and especially on handheld, it's difficult to go through all these different menus to try and turn up sound, turn down graphics, turn up frame rates, affect the different speeds of the gyros. Trying to play this is fun, but when you're trying to do this stuff in handheld, you're better off just saying set to default and playing it with the thumbstick, because anything else just isn't quite worth it. There are a lot of small changes in this that definitely made me love it more than even the original. I'm going to say this is better than the original House of the Dead, and part of it is just the fact that it feels like there's more character models, there's more variety to the enemies, there's more chances to actually be surprised by the little tiny added changes, and additionally, there used to be something that annoyed the heck out of me, which is that the screen used to flash occasionally when you were playing the original version. It would minorly strobe light, which to somebody like me, it just kind of gets irksome to be staring into a bright light. I say, well, just staring into a spotlight. But this version makes it much more great. There is no flashing. There's just straight up easy. Fire button, reload button, pure fun, fun, fun. If you have ever been a fan of House of the Dead, this is now the best version of the game. I absolutely cannot praise it enough. Beating it again and again on all the different difficulties and trying to find every little bit of hidden collectibles has been a very fun time. And I actually think that it's one of those games that's going to age exceptionally well, especially because now it feels like an arcade classic in a truly modern sense. Okay, so we've heard a lot of good, but there is a tiny bit of bad. Let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I punch the desk. I am giving The House of the Dead Remake 
a 9.5 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a giant thumbs up. Obviously, I like to try and get a couple thousand likes on every single video. You guys rock. Thank you for watching this spooky good time. Much love to you. And of course, thank you to the developers for the early review code so I can play this game nonstop for an entire week. You guys rock. Have a great day. And most importantly, keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.